Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to uh, offer you a few problems, very trivial problems, very simple problems, which are basically related only to the definition of trigonometric function. So basically all you know, all you have to know to solve these problems is the definitions. Um, I do recommend you to try to solve these problems just yourself. Go to unizor.com and in notes for this particular lecture uh, you will find all these problems. There are nine of them. I apologize for noise. Um, anyway, so uh, I will consider these problems right now and again they are only based on, uh, on the definitions of trigonometric functions. Alright, so let's just do it one by one. First, and probably the most famous trigonometric problem, is this. Now, this is an identity or equality which is true for any angle. Now, how can we prove that this is true? Well, let's just consider the definitions. So you remember that for any point let me actually take the point not in the first quadrant, but something like here. It has coordinates x and y. So by definition, sine of this angle phi is its ordinate. And cosine its abscissa. This is y, and this is x. Now, no matter where this point is, first quadrant, first, second, first, third, whatever, it's always, you can always consider this right triangle, and considering that the hypotenuse is equal to 1, this constitutes the Pythagorean theorem. So, basically, this fundamental um, identity um, between trigonometric functions sine and cosine, sine square plus cosine square of any angle is equal to 1, it's a direct consequence from the definition of the trigonometric functions sine and cosine and the Pythagorean theorem. Now, obviously, if we go back to a um, more, more narrow definition of the sine and cosine, which I have introduced in the beginning, for right triangle, and that's obviously true only for acute angles. So if you have this angle phi, this is a, b, c, and the sine of phi is a divided by c, and the cosine of phi is b divided by c. Now this is obvious identity, because again, you convert it into this, c squared the common denominator, and again you have a, plus, a squared plus b squared um, in the numerator, which is sum of the squares of the category, and uh, the c squared which is the hypotenuse square, and that's again the Pythagorean theorem because a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, so it's equal to 1. So, that's proven. Again, this is for a narrow definition of sine and cosine for um, acute angles, but the general definition works exactly the same way. We just have to consider different right triangles in any case. It doesn't matter that ordinate is negative or, or abscissa is, is negative. Since everything is squared, the sine is not important. So that's all for number one. And this is the only like, meaningful um, uh, identity which I will be talking about. Everything else is really trivial and follows straight from the definition. OK, tangent of phi times cotangent of phi is equal to 1. Well, first of all, can I say that this is always true? Absolutely not. Because tangent and cotangent have their um, domain as functions of an angle phi, have their, their, their domain, not all the different 
um, uh, angles. But there are certain exceptions. Now, let's go back to definition. Tangent, by definition, is sine over cosine, which means that wherever the cosine is equal to 0, tangent is not defined. And these are phi is equal to phi over 2 plus phi n of with these capital letters. So it's pi over 2, minus pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. n can be any integer number, positive, negative, whatever. So for these angles, cosine is not defined. Now, the cotangent is cosine over sine. And in this case, I should say not equal, phi not equal to phi n, which is 0 pi, 2 pi, minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, etc. That's where the sine is equal to 0. Now, everywhere else, this is obviously true because the tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine. Now, the denominators are not equal to 0. And what do we have as a result? Since it's not equal to 0, it's all reduced to 1. That's simple. It goes straight from the definition. And the only thing uh, I would say uh, you, you have to be accurate is that this particular uh, identity is not uh, uh, always true. I mean, in some cases, tangent or cotangent are undefined, primarily these cases. So for all phi not equal to pi n and not equal to pi over 2 plus pi n, that's true. Well, just in case, I'm not sure um, just, just as a reminder, again, this is our unit circle. Now, this is our point x, y. We are talking about sine of phi equals to y, and cosine of phi is equal to x. Now, I was talking about tangent and cotangent defined uh, wherever for tangent uh, cosine not equal to 0 and uh, for, um, for tangent cosine and for cotangent sine not equal to 0. So none of these, arginate or abscissa, should be equal to 0. And where are these angles? Geometrically, this point where your ordinate is equal to zero. This point is where or your cis is equal to zero. This point is where again ordinate is equal to zero. And this point is where abscissa is equal to zero. So these four points, which are pi over two plus pi over two plus pi over two plus pi over two. So these points are where either tangent or cotangent are not defined. So we have to exclude all these points. And instead of writing something like this, which I have written just a second ago, and phi not equal to pi n, instead of this, I can put um, uh, phi um, not equal to pi over 2 n. Right? Because this is pi n, which means 0, pi, 2 pi, etc., which is this and this and this and this and this. Now, this means pi over 2 plus pi n, which is this and this and this and this. So this constitutes this pair, and this constitutes uh, this, constitute this pair, and this constitutes this pair of points. But if I'm combining them, if I'm saying that pi should not be equal to neither these points nor these points, I can combine them in this particular formula. So that actually might be a little bit easier. So always think about this geometrical 
um, meaning of uh, trigonometric functions. So this last one, the tangent times cotangent not is equal to 1, is always true for phi not equal to pi over 2 times whatever n integer. Next, 1 plus tangent square phi equals to secant square of phi. OK, let's remember. Tangent is sine over cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine. So first of all, we have to think about where this function is defined. Now, in both cases, I have denominator cosine. So that's where the cosine not equal to 0 which is uh, phi not equal to pi over 2 plus pi n, right? These two points. Pi over 2, 90 degree, plus pi n, plus another pi n, plus another pi n, or minus, doesn't matter. So in those cases, my, uh, my, my cosine is not equal to 0, and that's why this is defined. But this is defined, I'll just substitute, what is it? 1 plus sine over cosine phi square should be equal to 1 over cosine phi square. Now, this is exactly the same as this for these angles. So instead of proving this, I can prove this. They are completely equivalent because I just substituted for tangent and, and, and secant their definitions. Now, how about this? Well, we can always square separately. So it would be 1 plus sine square phi, the cosine square phi, equals to 1 cosine square phi. Now, you've noticed that instead of writing uh, cosine f square, many times we are using cosine square phi. It's just notation. It's exactly the same thing. And uh, it's traditionally to use this notation instead of this notation. Now, this we can um, use the common denominator, which is cosine square cosine square phi divided by cosine square phi plus sine square phi divided by cosine square phi. And this is equal to cosine square phi. Why? Because this is equal to 1. Cosine square plus sine square is always equal to 1 for any angle phi. So that's why we have this. So this is an obvious um, uh, equality, which is exactly equivalent to these. So the proof, if you want to do it like uh, relatively rigorously, from here we came to here through these transformations, but everything is reversible. So from uh, this particular uh, equality, which is kind of obvious, we can always go back to uh, the original one, which is the proof. And again, don't forget that the whole thing is very, very important to re remember there is always the domain which we have to take into consideration. This is not always true. It's always true only with, with, um, uh, within this domain where tangent and cosecant uh, and secant um, are defined. Next. Next is absolutely symmetrical one but it's about cotangent. 1 plus cotangent cotangent square phi is equal to cosecant square phi. All right, cotangent cotangent by definition is cosine divided by sine. So sine should not be equal to 0, which is pi not equal to pi n. Okay? 
Now, the cosecant definition is 1 over sine. Same thing. So this is the common domain for left and right. So let's consider that phi is not equal to pi n. Now, both um, uh, sides of this uh, identity are defined. So we can just go straight from the definition. 1 plus cosine square phi divided by sine square phi is equal to 1 over sine square phi. I have already squared separately numerator and denominator. And this is also obvious because we can go to the common denominator, which is sine squared. And I will have sine squared phi over sine squared phi. That's my 1. And plus cosine squared phi. And this is obviously 1. So it's equal to 1 over sine squared phi. And everything, obviously, is reversible. So from a true statement, we go back to the one which we wanted to prove. That's simple. And basically, all of these examples are like that. First, you have to define the domain where left and right parts are defined. And secondly, very simple manipulations, which are primarily based on the definition of the trigonometric functions, are sufficient to prove. Next is tangent phi plus cotangent phi equals secant phi plus cosecant phi. Back to the roots, back to the definition. Um, tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Secant is 1 over cosine. And cosecant is 1 over sine. Right? So, what is the domain of left and the right? Well, in both cases, I have cosine in the numerator and sine in the numerator, and also cosine and sine. So that's basically the same situation which we were considering when we were, when we were multiplying tangent by cotangent. We had sine and cosine in the, numer in the denominator, which we have proven that this is the formula. So the angle should not be equal to pi over 2 times n which is 90 degree, 180 degree, 270, 0, 360, minus 90, minus 270, etc. So for all these angles, let's just substitute all this into this. What happens? All right. Tangent is sinus sine phi divided by cosine phi plus cosine phi divided by sine phi. That's the cotangent. And I made a mistake here. That's the multiplication. Right. And that's supposed to be equal to what? 1 over cosine phi times sine phi. True or not? True or false? Well, first of all, let's just say that this is, <coughs> is exactly equivalent to this. I just wrote the definition of, of all these functions. So proving this is the same as proving this. Now, how about this? Well, we do know that within this area, sine and cosine are not equal to 0. So I can manipulate with the way how I want it. Well, right, right now, obviously, I have to use the common denominator. In this case, it's sine times cosine, right? So sine over cosine, if the denominator is sine times cosine would be what? Sine squared phi divided by sine phi times cosine phi. Right? Sine over cosine, but I have to multiply it by sine, both numerator and denominator. So sine and another sine would be sine squared. Now this 
common denominator again, sine times cosine, but in this case I have to multiply by cosine. And I will get cosine squared. That's what I will get from on the left. Now, on the right, I still have the same thing. But this is 1, as has been proven in the problem number 1, right? So, we have the equality. Um, for all these angles, this is true and this is true. And that's why this is true. Nothing but analyzing the domain of left and right parts of the equality and basically using their defi the definition of the functions. All of these problems are like that. Next. Tangent phi divided by secant phi should be equal to sine of phi. Well, now, um, here is an interesting fact. Is secant uh, equal to zero? No. So this, you can always divide one by one, one by another. However, tangent is not always defined, and secant also is not always defined. So it's not the division per se which restricts us, but the definition of the functions themselves. On the right, however, I don't have any restrictions. Phi can be any. Any angle can have the sign, but not any angle can have a tangent, and not any angle um, has a secant. So what's the the right approach to this. Well, obviously, the right approach is to take the, uh, the smallest domain where both have sense. Now, this has sense everywhere, but this has sense only if tangent is defined, which is when cosine not equal to zero, right? Because tangent is sine over cosine. Now, secant is also one over cosine, so again, it's the same thing. So everywhere where cosine is not equal to zero, left part exists, which is what? Phi not equal to pi over 2 plus pn. So that's the domain where we have to really consider the left part. And the right part, obviously, as well. So if phi is equal to, let's say, pi over 2, well, all we can say is that the right part exists, but the left part is not. That's why there is no um, equality. So we are only considering these, uh, these angles, not equal to pi over 2 plus pi n. Geometrically, it's this. This one and this one are excluded. Every, every other angle is, is fine. Now, if this is the domain which we're talking about, then let's just use sine over cosine. That's my tangent divided by 1 over cosine phi. That's the left, which is actually equal to what? Sine over cosine, that's this one, divided by 1 and multiplied by cosine of phi. And we can reduce it, and we get the sign, what we want. And Again, I reduced it here, knowing that cosine is not equal to zero, so I can do it safely. All right? It's very important, when you're given something like this, to understand that this is not like 100% true statement. You always have to think about what's the definition, uh, what's the domain, actually, of the function on the left, on the right. And if these domains are different, uh, over overlap or, or something, you have to really use the smallest one where both sides have sense and are defined. Now I have kind of symmetrical problem. You have a cotangent phi divided by cosecant phi, and it should be equal to uh, cosine 
fine, right? Let's think about it. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So sine should not be equal to 0. That's the condition. Now, cosecant is 1 over sine, which is also uh, uh, restricted to these, uh, to these angles. And, when, and, and, and where is sine is equal to 0? Uh, that's where. It's 0, that's where the sine is equal to 0, sine is ordinate, and pi. And 0 and pi, and minus pi, and, and trig 160 degree, which is 2 pi, etc., etc. So all the multiples of pi are excluded, and all other angles are fine. And now we just have to go by definition. Instead of a cotangent, we, we put cosine phi over sine. Instead of cosecant, we put 1 over sine, which is equal to cosine phi divided by sine, divided by 1, and multiplied by sine. Sine is not equal to phi. Uh, sine, sine, sine of phi is not equal to 0. So we can reduce it, and we get the cosine. Two more. I hope it's not very boring. Um, I, I, I think what's really important is to understand all these exceptions in the domain where the left part and right part are defined. Everything else is really straightforward. OK, now, sine to the fourth minus cosine to the fourth equals 2 sine square minus 1. All right. It's only sines and cosines, which means everything is fine and any angle uh, is good and the functions are defined. So now this is, um, well, I would like to remind you I hope you remember this. If you don't, just check it out. A squared minus AB plus AB, so it's redu AB is reduced, and minus B squared. So that's the same thing. Now, using this, I will substitute A equals to sine squared, and B equals cosine squared. So A squared is sine to the fourth, right? And b squared is cosine to the force. So I can say that this difference is equal to a minus b times a plus b, which is sine squared phi minus cosine squared phi times sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. That's the left part. Now, this is equal to 1, as we know. So I have only sine square phi minus cosine square phi. That's the left part. Now, because of this, sine square phi is equal to 1 minus cosine square phi, right? Or, if you wish, cosine square phi is equal to 1 minus sine square phi, right? That's the direct consequence from the sine, sine square plus co, sine square plus cosine square is equal to one. So I can um, express sine uh, uh, through the cosine or cosine through the sine. So I will do this. Sine square phi minus instead of cosine square phi, I will take this, which obviously is sine square phi minus 1 plus sine square phi, which is exactly what this is. So I transform this left part of this um, identity using the representation as a product of two uh, terms. One is equal to 1, so I just basically got rid of it, and the other I was using the main trigonometric identity I should really 
say sine square plus cosine square uh, equals one is a main trigonometric identity. That's how probably everybody remembers it. Um, so I just use the expression of cosine square uh, through the cosine uh, through the sine square, and I got the right part. So that's simple, right? So what's the creative part uh, in this particular case? This uh, representation of uh, difference of four uh, force power to the product of uh, these two uh, members. That, that's the only creative part. Everything else is just straightforward. OK. And the last problem. Sine phi minus cosine phi plus 1 times cosine phi equals sine phi plus cosine phi plus 1 1 plus sine phi well this is kind of a trivial exercise as far as I understand well let's just open all the parentheses what do we have sine times cosine minus cosine square plus cosine that's the left part. The right part is uh, sine plus cosine plus 1 plus sine square phi plus sine phi cosine phi plus sine phi. Well, let's just think about it. This can be reduced, right? And this can be reduced. So I have cosine square with a minus sign I think I mixed the sign somewhere it should be something else because the sign should reduce I think it's minus one it's minus one Am I right? Now I would have minus 1 here and minus here. Okay, now it works fine. Because now these signs are reduced and what do I have left? Minus cosine square phi equals minus 1 plus sine square phi, right? Which is a true statement because I can add one to both sides. I will get this and add cosine square to both parts. I will have this, which is a true identity, the main identity of trigonometry. So, from this, I came to this through equivalent transformations, which obviously are, are all reversible. There are nothing here which is irreversible. I didn't divide by anything, I didn't multiply by anything, so everything is just pluses and minuses. And again, the main trigonometric identity. Well, that's it. That's all the problems I have. Um, I do recommend you to go through them again. Just go to unizor.com, notes for this lecture, and just do it yourself. It, it's really very, very simple. And the purpose was primarily to, um, to bring your attention to 
to two things. Number one, the definitions of trigonometric functions. The tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine, secant, cosecant, etc. So number one is to bring your attention to definition. Number two, to bring your attention to domains um, of expressions, of trigonometric uh, expressions. If trigonometric expressions contain functions which are not defined everywhere, like tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, that's the restriction. You have to really understand that wherever these functions are not defined, the whole identity doesn't make any sense. Um, also, if your identity involves some uh, operations like division, obviously wherever the uh, denominator equals to zero makes more restrictions onto the values of uh, whatever the arguments are. So again, the definitions and the domains. These are very, very important when you're talking about all these equalities. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.